Hi, it's Jill Osborne from the Interstitial Cystitis Network and I'm here today with another self-help tip on living with IC. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about treatment options. Because if you're a newly diagnosed patient, I imagine that you're feeling a little confused and overwhelmed. And if you're an older grizzled veteran of IC, you may not be aware of some of the new therapies that have emerged in the last couple of years. But before I do that, there's an important golden rule I want to share with you, and that is that your personal medical care provider, this is a doctor that you work with face to face, is the only person who should be giving you medical care and treatment recommendations. As you're cruising the internet looking for information on IC, you're going to find a lot of really tantalizing websites and statements Websites are going to say that they can heal or cure IC, or they may make statements that their product can help do that for you. And it's very important that you be skeptical. There's this important concept. It's called evidence-based medicine. And what that means is that there's evidence which supports a claim or a statement. So, for example, let's take the statement, drug A cures IC. You know what? That's interesting. Boy, that's going to get all of our attention. But the question then is, how do you know it's real? I mean, how do you know that it's factual? How do you know that that's not just a sham company trying to sell you a sugar pill? Well, the way you know is by looking at the supporting information, preferably research. You know, most of the IC therapies that are currently under, under development or that are currently in use in clinics have a lot of research behind them. And you can go to the National Library of Medicine website, which is pubmed.org, and put in any treatment and put in interstitial cystitis, and it will give you the research studies which show the effectiveness of that therapy. What you've got to be really careful of are some of the over-the-counter and alternative stuff where they might just give you a patient testimonial. They might just say, hey, Jill took this and she was much better, or Henry took this and it cured his symptoms. Well, the problem is, is you don't know if it's real. You don't even know if that's a patient testimonial. It just may, may be something that the marketing department made up. So always look for research. And if there is no research, ask them for it. Now listen, I'm personally of the opinion that if a company is going to go so far as to make a claim about their product or treatment with IC, they better put some money up to prove it. I'm always suspicious when they won't do that because that to me is due diligence. So if the company says, no, we, have, we don't have any research, you know, we just don't want to do that, I personally think that that's a bit of a red flag and I would look at other therapies that have been tested instead. But hey, that's just me. But you know what? That's why you have a medical care provider like your urologist or your OBGYN. I mean, use them. Take the information you get online, credibility test it yourself, and then bring it to them and ask them, what do you think are the pros and the cons of this therapy? What are the potential risks? What are the potential benefits? Your ability to have good practical conversations with your doctor is essential because that's going to help you in the long term as you consider therapies. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox and let's go ahead and talk about therapies. One of the first concepts you might want to consider in treatment is a bladder coating. Now think about it, when you have IC, you have a pretty tender, irritated, inflamed, and in some cases, wounded bladder wall. And the challenge is, is that your kidneys are always working. They're always producing urine, which is going down your ureters into your bladder where it can irritate a tender, IC bladder. So the concept of a coating that can help cover up those wounds and protect them makes total sense. And in fact, the only oral medication approved by the US FDA for IC is called pentosin polysulfate, also known as Elmeron, and it is indeed a bladder coating. You can learn a lot more about Elmeron on our website or just Google it and go to the company website. But there's another way to take medication 
into your bladder and that is in the form of a bladder installation. Basically all they do is they put a small catheter through your urethra and put the medication in that way. And what's great about that is that you know 100% of the medication gets to the target organ. You know, when you take a medication by mouth, a good part of it's digested and rendered inactive. And so not all of that medication is going to get to the bladder unless, of course, you put it directly in the bladder as a bladder installation. And in fact, one of the more popular therapies today around the country is called a rescue installation. And it basically is a bladder coating combined with an anesthetic. So in, it's usually either heparin, and in some cases it might be Elmeron, combined with some lidocaine, marcaine, and or maybe a few other ingredients. And what's nice about a rescue installation is it's really one of the first therapies that doctors have had that could break you out of a flare. You can learn a lot more about rescue installations on our website. Now another therapy that makes sense is an antihistamine. Why? Because there is definitely some histamine-induced inflammation in the bladder wall in some patients with IC. So the antihistamine commonly used by IC patients is called hydroxyzine, also known as Atarax or Vistaril. Now, another type of medication that a doctor may suggest to you is an antidepressant. You should never be offended by that. They're not saying that they think it's all in your head or that you're depressed. Antidepressants, when used in low doses, can actually help limit the pain response. And in fact, most pain clinics around the country use antidepressants as part of their treatment arsenal. Of course, the challenge with antidepressants is they are more well known for causing side effects like dry mouth, dry eyes, maybe a fast heart rate or an irregular heart rate, in some cases some weight gain. And so if the doctor is suggesting that to you, you need to make sure you have a good conversation with him about him or her about potential side effects. Now another medication that is potentially at your disposal is an antispasmodic if you're struggling with bladder spasms. You might be able to use a muscle relaxant if you're struggling with pelvic floor dysfunction. But of course, when you have pelvic floor dysfunction, one of the best therapies of all is doing physical therapy. Don't assume that a pill is gonna be the way that you're gonna fix your problem. I mean, the, the thing about muscles, you usually need to work with them hands-on. And hands-on physical therapy is considered the more effective way of treating pelvic floor dysfunction. Another medication that might be available is a urinary anesthetic like Peridium or Urel, which, can ha which will color your urine. You might end up with orange urine or you might end up with blue urine, but what it does is it kind of temporarily numbs the bladder wall. Now, of course, there are certainly others that are available. You know, pain patients might need to use some pain medication. What you want to do is educate yourself about treatment options, and a very good resource is the IC Survival Guide by Robert Moldwin. This is a wonderful book to have, especially if you're newly diagnosed. If you're struggling with pelvic pain and pelvic floor dysfunction, a book you want to have is Heal Pelvic Pain by Amy Stein. What's nice about this book is it has a lot of things that you can do at home that can help relax your pelvic floor. And of course, we always have patients who want to do a more natural approach to treating their symptoms. And, and that's always a little bit tricky, but we do have a pretty good resource, and that's called the Women's Encyclopedia to Natural Medicine by Dr. Tori Hudson, which has a nice chapter on interstitial cystitis. And what I really like about her is her, well, her solid knowledge of IC research. This is a good book that uses evidence-based medicine. I hope that that helps. I hope that you're seeing some response with your treatments. And as always, if you're looking for more information on IC, please come to our website at www.ic-network.com.